Let's consider the problem 245H, queries for number of palindromes, which is pretty self-explanatory to what the problem is. We're going to solve this using dynamic programming. So the problem is as follows. You have a string S, which in the sample input is C, A, 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 B, A. And then you have several queries. And in each query, you have to output the number of palindromes in that range. This is a very difficult problem, so let's solve a simpler problem. Given a range of the string, determine whether or not that range is a palindrome. In order to do this, let's create a table, and we can start filling out our table. The value of 1, 1, which is the letter C, is a palindrome, so we put a 1. 1, 2, C, A is not a palindrome. C, A, A is also not, and the rest of these are also not palindromes. The range from 2 to 1 doesn't exist because that range goes backwards. You cannot start at 2 and end at 1 if you're only going forward. So by default, 2 of 1 is 0. 2 to 2 is the letter A, which is a palindrome. 2 to 3 is the letters AA, which is also a palindrome. 2 to 4 is the letters AAA, which is again a palindrome. 2 to 5 is AAAB, which is not a palindrome. And 2 to 6 is AAABA, which again is not a palindrome. We can fill in the rest of the table using the exact same method we used to fill in the first two rows. The next question is, how do we write a program to create this table? The idea is as follows. Let's say we have a palindrome. If the character to the left of the palindrome is the same as the character to the right of the palindrome, then the whole entire thing is a palindrome. How do we know if this is a palindrome? Well, what we can do is we can loop through all possible strings of length one. Any string of length one is just one letter, so it has to be a palindrome. From the string of length one, we add two characters, so we get to the length three, then to length five, then to length seven, and we never get to any character, any strings of even length. Because of this, we also we also have to repeat the process for strings of length two. If we have a string of length 2, if the two characters are the same, this would be a string like AA or BB, then it's a palindrome. Otherwise, it's not a palindrome. And for strings of length 2, we get the strings of length 4, 6, 8, and so forth. Using these two base cases and this formula, we can find all the palindromes of all lengths and create this table. I'll explain better how to write the program while actually writing the program during the end of the video. Now let's focus on how to use this table here to solve the actual problem, to find all the palindromes within a particular range. Let's consider the query 2, 3. This means that the string can start anywhere from 2 to 3 and it has to end anywhere from 2 to 3, but it must end after it starts. This is represented by this box right here. The answer is the sum of all the values in the box, which is 3. We make sure it starts from 2 to 3, and that it ends from 2 to 3. We also make sure that it doesn't start after it ends, by having this green 0 there. Our answer is the sum of all the values in the box. So we don't add a value if it starts after it ends by putting a 0. We can do the same thing for any of these queries, like the query 1, 4. When we take the sum of the box, and this box from 1 to 4, from the start and from the end, the sum is 7. Hence, the answer to the query is 7. Now we need an efficient way to calculate the sum of the box. If we loop through the whole entire box for every query, then the runtime of that is O of Q times M squared, which is too big and we'll get TLE. However, we can actually calculate each query in O of Q with doing pre-processing of n squared, leading to a runtime of O of Q plus n squared. Now this will work. Suppose we create a new grid where every element in that grid is the sum of the upper left corner. For example, the value of 2, 2 would be the sum of this whole region here. So the value would be 2 instead of 1. Now let's consider how to find this. Suppose we want to find the value of the box 3, 4. We can take the value of the box 2, 4, 
which is this region here, and add the value of the box 3, 3, which is this region here. So now we have taken the whole region from 3 to 4. However, we're adding the region from 2 to 3 twice. To solve this problem, we can simply subtract the region from 2 to 3. We have now considered the whole region from 3 to 4 one time. Pal, because it determines whether or not a given range is a palindrome. Let's call our new array pre, because it stores the prefix sums of the upper left corner. In order to determine pre of ij, in our case that's the red box, pal of 3, 4, for box, which is the first purple area that was shaded, which is pre of i minus 1, j, that we shaded, which is pre of i, j minus 1. We then have to subtract the pink area so that we only count that area once. So we subtract pre of i minus 1, j minus 1. And this is our formula for solving for pre i, j. Since it takes all of 1 to solve for pre i, j, and there is n square spots in the array of pre, this runs in O of n squared time. One thing to note is that if we're trying to find pre of 1, 4, we have to be able to add pre of i minus 1 j and pre of i minus 1 j minus 1. Because of this, it's optimal to use one base indexing. Because if we use zero base indexing, then pre of i minus 1 is pre of negative 1 j, which doesn't exist. If we use one base indexing, then pre of 1 minus 1 is pre of 0 j, which does exist. If we're trying to solve the query 4, 6, then we're trying to count the number of ones in this box here. If we take pre of 6, 6, then we take all of these elements here. This, however, is way too many elements. So let's say we subtract pre of 3, 6. Now we're only taking the elements that are highlighted green. However, this is still too many elements. So now we subtract pre of 6, 3. However, now we have subtracted the region from 3 to 3, from 1 to 3, twice. So what we do is we add back the region from 3 to 3. And now we have our intended region from 4 to 6 taken just one time. Now, if we want to answer the query in the range from A to B, in our example in the range from 4 to 6, we first take pre of BB, which in our example is pre of 6, 6. That's the big green region. We then have to subtract the two small red regions. The first one is pre A minus 1 B, which is pre 3, 6, this value here. We then have to subtract pre of B A minus 1, which in this case is pre of 6, 3. That value there. We then have to add back the tiny green region, which is pre a minus 1 a minus 1, or in our case, pre of 3 3. This is how we answer a query. Since it takes O of 1 to answer each query, the runtime of this to answer all the queries is O of Q. We have now solved the entire problem. The first thing we have to do is include everything. Include bit slash scdc plus plus dot h includes all the libraries. We always use namespace scd, which is the standard namespace. We then have to declare our variables. n is the length of our string s, q is the number of queries, our palindrome array is 5001 by 5001 because we're using one base indexing. The same logic applies to our pre array. The first thing we want to do in our main is to read the input. Since there can be up to a million lines of input, we have to use fast input output. One way to do this is to use scanf. Another way is to add these two lines of code, iOS base, sync with standard IO0, and cn.ty0. This will ensure that we don't get time limit exceeded while reading the input. We then read in our string s, and n is the length of the string. We need to convert our string to one base indexing because our other arrays, such as pal and pre, are all in one base indexing, and it's easiest to keep everything consistent. We can do this by adding an empty character to the beginning of the string s. We now need to create our palindromes. Our two base cases are palindromes of length 1 and palindromes of length 2. All strings of length 1 are palindrome, so we simply loop through all strings of length 1 and mark them as palindromes. 
Not all strings of length 2 are palindromes. Because of this, we have to loop through all strings of length 2 and check if they're palindromes. We're going to loop from i to n minus 1, or less than our i is less than n, simply because we want to be able to check if s of i equals s of i plus 1. And if we go up to the value n, then s of n plus 1 would not exist and we will get an error. So if the two characters are the same, then that string of length 2 is a palindrome. Now we need to check through palindromes of all lengths. Now we're saying here that we're going from length 0 to length n minus 2. This is what length we are using to check. In reality, we are creating palindromes length 2 more than this length. In addition, the length is actually 1 more than the value of len. Simply because if we go from the range i to i, i plus 0 is i. So the length seems like it'll be 0, but it actually is 1, because there's one character. Now we use i as our starting index, and len as 1 less than the length. Now we need to check if the current string is a palindrome, and if the character on the left of the string is, is the same as the character on the right of the string, to see if we have an even bigger palindrome. The current string goes from i to i plus len. Because of this, we check if the palindrome from i to i plus len is actually a palindrome, and if the string from i minus 1 equals a string from i plus len plus 1. Then that means the two characters on the left and the right of the palindrome are the same. So the palindrome from i plus 1 to i plus len plus 1 is actually a palindrome. Now we are done creating our palindrome array. We now need to create our prefix sum array where every element in this array stores the sum of the array palindrome in the upper left corner. We need to loop through every single element in the grid. So we go from i equals 1 all the way up to i less than or equal to n, and same thing for j. For every element in this grid, we use our formula to find what prefix of i j is. Prefix of i j is pal of i j plus prefix of i minus 1 j plus prefix of i j minus 1, minus the reason we counted twice, which is prefix of i minus 1 j minus 1. Now that we created our prefix array, we have to answer the queries. So you first read in the number of queries, and then for each query, we get two numbers, a and b. a and b are already in one based indexing, so we do not have to convert them. Now, we need to output these queries and using fast output because we don't want to get time limit exceeded for slow output. Because of this we use printf. We are going to print the output to our query which is pre of bb minus pre of a minus 1b minus pre of b a minus 1 plus the region we subtracted twice which is pre of a minus 1a minus 1. We have now answered all our queries and solved the problem.